Hi everyone, my name is Emily Braithwaite. I'm a faculty research assistant at Oregon State University. And today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Specialty Crops Research Initiative, Low Input Turf Grass Using Fine Fescues, and some of the projects that Oregon State is involved with. This is a multi-state grant that's being led by Dr. Eric Watkins from the University of Minnesota. And there are co-investigators from several other institutions across the US, Rutgers in New Jersey, Purdue in Indiana, University of Wisconsin, Oregon State, and the USCA ARS in Utah. There's many different components to this grant, starting with a sociological aspect that's identifying barriers to fine fescue adoption. We also have a genetics and breeding initiative that's seeking to improve the germplasm, as well as biological field research that is ongoing. And then the management portion, which is where OSU fits in, where we are quantifying some of those benefits. And all of this is the long-term goal of increasing the use of well-adapted fine fescue cultivars into sustainable landscapes. One of the major challenges of this grant is to identify different ways to facilitate the adoption of fine fescues into existing landscapes. So researching both management and establishment of fine fescues across the participating locations in the US, it can help us provide resources on transitioning to these lower input species. And this is really what OSU has been involved with, the management and establishment side of things. So I'm gonna briefly cover today three of the trials that we've been involved with as part of this grant. The first trial was the patch and repair treatment trial. And this was done to assess potential low input turf grass patch and repair ingredients for home lawns in the spring. We did this alongside Purdue University with Aaron Patton and Dr. Ross Braun. So currently, many of these marketed products, these patch and repair kits, they contain other cool season species, such as perennial ryegrass or tall fescue, and there's little to no low input species like fine fescues. So what we did is we evaluated several different mulch ingredients with a fine fescue seed mixture and with or without additional fertilizer. Our preliminary results indicated that there were multiple financially feasible options for homemade patch and repair ingredients that included low input species. Here's some of the different mulch materials that we evaluated. They included a newspaper that's been chopped up, topsoil, a pressed paper-based mulch, potting soil, wood chips, and compost. And these were chosen because these would be easily accessible by a homeowner to make their own patch and repair kit. We also included a no mulch plot. And major findings were that using compost consistently encouraged rapid turf establishment cover from seed. And the addition of a starter fertilizer had minimal impact on establishment. For more detailed information on the results from this study, there is a research article that's available through Crop Science. The next trial that we did was looking at documenting the success and determining optimal times of the year for planting fine fescues in Oregon. So every month from March through November of 2019, fine fescue plots were seeded and evaluated. We looked at germination, quality, cover and weed encroachment. And this was replicated across five different locations in the US, Indiana, Minnesota, New Jersey, Connecticut and here in Oregon. And we were determining optimal timings for each region. The full results are in the process of being combined and will be available soon, but some of the preliminary observations from our Oregon site have showed the greatest success with April, May and September timings. This is a trial that's still ongoing. Um, it is the Establishment Nitrogen Fertilization Trial. We're determining optimal nitrogen fertility programs for fine fescue at establishment. So we're evaluating each species individually in this trial rather than the other ones, which was a, a mixture of the four. And we have chewings, strong creeping red, slender creeping red, and hard fescue. Some of our ratings will include turf cover, the quality, clover cover, and weed encroachment. Here's just an overview of the different fertilization programs that we included. And all these rates of nitrogen are per thousand square feet. So we had no nitrogen, a half a pound applied at planting, one pound applied at planting, one and a half pounds total, which was applied as a half a pound at planting, and then one pound four weeks after planting. Two pounds total applied as one pound at planting, and then one pound four weeks after planting. Two and a half pounds total applied as one at planting, one pound four weeks after planting, and finally a half a pound eight weeks after planting. We're also assessing planting clover at seeding rather than nitrogen, 
So we had a Bursim clover and a white Kura clover, which you can see in some of these plots here. This is being replicated at Purdue in Indiana and Minnesota, as well as here in Oregon. Unfortunately, due to a really late seeding date in 2019, the poa pressure in Oregon was incredibly high. So we're actually repeating this trial for a second time with a next seeding date occurring in September of 2020. Finally, for more information about this grant and updates on the many different research projects being conducted across the US, I'd encourage you to visit lowinputturf.umn.edu or follow at lowinputturf on Twitter for updates and blog posts on fine fescues. The most recent blog post covers low input turf species on golf courses. I sat down with Eric Johnson from Chambers Bay in Washington to hear about his experiences managing fine fescue golf courses in the Pacific Northwest. Thanks so much for your time and don't forget to visit our website beaverturf.com for that Zoom Q&A link on September 2nd, 9am Pacific time, where you can ask our panel the questions about the videos you've been watching. Also, ODA and GCSAA credits will be available.